Mein Name ist Michelle Darnell und ich bin die reichste Frau Amerikas. Wie reich ich bin? Ich wollte auf einem goldenen Phönix herunterschweben und scheiße, genau das habe ich getan. Ich leite Ihren ganzen Laden und ich bin alleinerziehende Mutter. Ich verdiene eine Gehaltserhöhung. Sie haben ein Kind? Ja. Etwa durch Geschlechtsverkehr? Ja. Ich spüre für gewöhnlich eher asexuelle Schwingungen. Ich habe sie mir noch nie mit Genitalien vorgestellt. Ich verhafte Sie wegen Insiderhandels. Michelle, wehren Sie sich nicht! Verdammter Hurensohn! Sie sind pleite. Ihre Konten wurden alle eingefroren. Claire, besorg mir einen neuen Anwalt. Sie haben kein Geld mehr, Sie dämlicher Rotschopf! Mm. Mom, wenn sie sonst nirgendwo hin kann, dann sollte sie hier bleiben. Ha, sieh mal eine an. Ein Bett in einem Sofa. Vorsicht, das ist etwas temperamentvoll. Ist nicht so schlimm. Oh, ich glaube, ich habe mir das Becken gebrochen. Michelle, Sie müssen von der Couch runter. Bringen Sie Rachel zum Löwenzahntreffen. Unsere Gruppe hat 189.000 Dollar gesammelt. Ach du Scheiße. Ich bin dagegen, dass Menschen auf Bewährung unsere Treffen besuchen. Wenn du mich nicht in Ruhe lässt, schieb ich dir eine Schachtel Schokomüsli in deinen festen, engen Arsch. What an amazing movie. It was so super, super, super funny. Thank you. I'm so glad to hear that. That's the reaction we wanted. Tell a little bit about it. I mean, you co-wrote with your husband. So, I mean, I how do you get into funny... I mean, <laughs> how do you, like, find things like that? I don't want to give too much away, but it's just like... Oh I, God. you know, I wrote, I co-wrote it with my husband, Ben, mm -hmm. and then our one of our uh, closest friends, Steve Mallory, who actually in the film plays Carl, that I, with the beard, that I, I say terrible things about his deceased <laughs> wife. So we wrote it with yes. him, and uh, I came up with Michelle Darnell about 15 years ago at the Groundlings Theater, which is an improv theater in Los Angeles. It's where I met Ben, where I met Steve. Um, strangely, where I met Dax Shepard, Kristen's husband, before they ever met. We were we all go way back. And I just kind of, she came to my head one day, and I knew everything about her. I knew how she dressed, how she talked how she stood, how her cadence was, how aggressive she was. I just kind of, she came to me in kind of a 3D uh, form. And I did, I did a sketch at the, at the theater where I went into the audience and I did a how to make money seminar. And I just could never let her go. Over the years, I would still talk about her and her backstory kind of kept growing in my head and I'd say more things about her. And we'd be talking about one thing and all of a sudden I'd say, you know, I think Michelle was an orphan, and Ben would say, like, we're not even talking about her. It's been five years. You're still talking about this character. I just kind of loved her, and I wanted to kind of tell her full story. You did a fantastic job. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so now, the clothes. Oh, my God. I mean, I wow. miss those clothes. <laughs> I truly, truly miss... I mean, that's... she. When I first did the character, she looked very much like that. She had short, spiky red hair. I wore a turtleneck in, in the theater up to here. And when we started, Wendy Chuck is our costume designer who's amazing. And uh, when we kind of started building her, it just, it became so fun and also kind of so luxurious. Everything was like charmeuse and cashmere. And it just, like, the more ridiculous she got, the more we loved it. And I have to say, at the end of a day, like, I spent all day in this kind of amazing, you know, with the hats and the capes and the scarves and the bows and the nails and the heels. And then at the end of the day, I'd put on my sneakers and, like, ripped jeans. And I was like, all right, I kind of miss Michelle. <laughs> you don't think those clothes, we're going to see somewhere down the line in your fashion line? Somewhere, I maybe? think a little bit of, you know, I think a little bit of Michelle will always be with me. I mean, I always love a bow. I love bows and ties and all of that stuff, but I did kind of learn, you know, really dressing up. I mean, I'm always one to be like, take take some risks, have fun with it. But I've done, I've done some more, um, I think some more adventurous pieces, I think with her in mind of like, why not make a reversible cape? Michelle would love it. Like, I love things like that. I, I'm, I, I love to kind of push the boundaries with everything, so. I, th I think she's creeping her way into my clothing line. <laughs> we see you selling things, and you, al you also said, like, oh, there's nothing I cannot sell. So now... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I said that? <laughs> yes. Me oh, everything. No, 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 in, in the film. But, <laughs> yeah. but that's what I'm saying, like, you know, you personally, what would there be if you would have to sell something now? What could you sell? I sell, well, I mean, you have, to, you have to sell every movie. You have to sell True. when you want a part. You have to get in there and sell yourself. Uh, I have a clothing line. I have to sell every time I want a certain piece made or a certain fabric or a print. I mean, I constantly, constantly come up against people that are like, that's, 
that's too much, that's too crazy, that's too this, that you shouldn't do that. And I, I, if I really, really, really truly feel like it's the right thing, I fight for it. But I mean, when you fight for it, you gotta sell it. You've gotta convince somebody to think you have the right idea. Was ist das alles? Das ist mein Neuanfang. Ich gründe ein Brownie-Imperium und bringe Mädchen bei, wie man nach oben kommt. Wir brauchen ein paar fähige Rekruten. Konzentriere dich auf die aggressiven Mädels. Irgendwie zittere ich. Das ist nur die Wirkung des Kaffees. Oh, weißt du was? Oh, ich habe sie wohl verwechselt. In meinen hatte ich einen Spritzer Bourbon getan. Don't call it a okay, Crystal, was sagen wir, wenn jemand nichts kaufen will? Ich kauf meine Brownies oder ich töte dich. Nein, sag das nicht, Crystal. Oh, sag das, es ist and is there anything you ever had to sell something funny like you know phone cells or something like that? I, I took a job when I was probably maybe 18 where we all it was like five of us in a like a motel room which was very dodgy. I thought it was going to be like a conference room and I was like, there were two bed, like a really bad mo motel, two weird beds, and uh, there were f f five uh, phone books on each bed. And we were given a sheet of paper, two sheets of paper. It was like an endless thing of like, of what to sell. And we had each got a phone book and she said, you are A, you are B, you are C. And we had to just start. And it was like, hi, are you interested in a package of phone click? Hi, are you interested? Hello, are you in? And then she had bells all over. So if you actually sold a photograph package to someone, you were supposed to get up in this dingy hotel room and ring the bell. No one rang the bell. And I said, can I rephrase this and just be like, hey, we're selling. You had to read the exact script. No one on earth let you get through two full pages. You got like two lines in and people hung up on you. <laughs> I did. I was like the saddest job. We we're all just like sitting on a bed, like boop, 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 boop. <laughs> Hello, click. Oh wow. So now we'll see uh, in the film. Um, you know, said so there is if you lose everything in life. I don't want to give too much away. Yeah. But I mean, and you know, all what's left is a box. Now, if you would lose everything, or if you could pack things and just have your box and leave, what would you put in your box? <sighs> my kids, my husband, and my dog. Great. It's a big box, <laughs> but big I box. only need those things. Everything else can go. I don't want everything else to go, but they're the only things, maybe some old pictures. But uh, for the most part, if I know, if I know where my family is and you know, I'm good. You're good. Yeah. Red hair. Oh love my God, it. it's looked so good on you. Was that something you I, always wanted to have? I, I, I had red hair for a while, uh, years ago, and I kind of love it. I feel like all my Irish Heritage comes out like in when my, 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 like I really I love a redhead. My do, my daughter was a redhead for like the first two years of her life, and I was so excited. And then it turned it turned into a beautiful light brown. But I like a redhead. I may do it one of these days. I'm just gonna go red. Yeah. So do you think your husband likes you better like that or <laughs> <is> a redhead? <laughs> I think I think he likes me like this. Luckily, I think. Uh, I think he likes Michelle quite a bit, but it's a lot. There's a lot of work that goes into Michelle. Like, she's one of those women that's like, I'll see you in three hours when I'm done doing my makeup. What was the best vacation you ever took, and where was it to? Oh. And why? You liked it. Country was, or, you know. I think the best vacation, we just did one not too long ago. We don't, we we're way overdue for vacation, so we took like a mini one. Um, every once in a while we'll go for like three or four days we'll go somewhere by the ocean and somehow and even though I live in California I live in Los Angeles I'm not at the ocean you know it's like when you're here you're not actually yeah. right by the water when I get near the water I it's literally like someone gives me a sleeping pill all of my nerve I'm, I'm pretty spazzy I'm always doing like if I'm reading something I'm also doing this and I'm, it's like I'm always juggling I get next to the ocean I'm like <laughs> I just complete. I like. I go from one couch to the next, just like fought, fought, passing out. Nice. Something crazy happens. So that's a pretty good. That's a pretty. That was a pretty good vacation because I literally just mm -hmm. slept and like kept trying to read a book and then would pass out and nice. I'd wake up with like one of my kids on top of me. I was like, oh. nice, nice. The boss. I mean, at work, your husband is the boss. At home, who's the boss? 
We both are. We really, we really honestly balance it really well. Like, I think not, not, neither one of us is, is, uh, there's no ego or neither one of us is ever trying to win. I think, I think we get along so well because we're like, yeah, we'll talk about it. We'll figure out what we both think and then we'll, we'll go from there. We're, we're pretty mellow about stuff. Like we're not, we're not fighters. We're not, we're never competing against each other. It's just not, it's not how we go. I mean, at home, our kids, our kids win. Our kids are the boss, for sure. We don't have a shot. Not a shot. They control everything. I'm lucky I'm even out today. <laughs> Thank you so much. Der Pullover schreit ja förmlich, ich gebe auf. Oh, das ist wirklich sehr ermutigend, so kurz vor meinem Date. Hör auf! Wenn du hören könntest, was diese zwei traurigen Bässe Tunde sagen. Claire, drapier uns über deine Nein, Hüfte. so klingen meine Brüste nicht. Bitte steck uns nicht wieder in deine Jeans. Zeig mal her. Claire, das ist ja wie beim Puppentheater. Oh,